This demonstration shows you how you can use preventive maintenance programs to enhance your business. This includes the capability to control the timeframes used to forecast and create work orders for the program, as well as the ability to centrally manage a forecast for assets across organizations. We're now going to review the demonstration. To begin, we're going to review the setup for maintenance programs. Uh, this includes the ability to set up a maintenance program subtype lookup. You can also set up maintenance parameter options that will control the behavior of the maintenance programs. And optionally, you can set up organization relationships if you wish to forecast and create work orders for assets that operate in non-maintenance organizations. Then we're going to review the forecast of assets both within the contextual organization as well as those assets that are across organizations. This includes the ability to define forecast and work order windows as well as other work order creation options. And finally, we'll review the forecast on the new maintenance forecast page. Here we can view asset due dates and take some user actions. Let's begin by reviewing several setup options that your administrators can review. The first is in setup and maintenance, you can go to the maintenance management functional area and we can review several setup tasks that are available. The first one is the manage asset maintenance parameters task. Within this task, there's a new tab called Additional Parameters. On here are two options that we're going to review. The first is Allow, Suppress, and Merge across work requirements in a maintenance program. We encourage you to set this to No if you do not have any current or expect any future work requirements to be modeled for the same asset that will consider merge and suppress across work requirements. In our user documentation, we recommend only using merge and suppress within a work requirement. So by setting this option to no, the forecast program will not consider merge and suppress across work requirements. The next parameter is entitled consider organization relationships when creating maintenance work orders. If you wish to create work orders across organizations using the manage work orders UI, REST service or file based import, then this parameter being set to yes will require you to create those relationships. However, if you don't wish to create those relationships, then you can set this parameter to no, and those relationships will not be required by the work order creation methods I just listed. Additionally, if you wish to centralize your maintenance programs, uh, creation and management of assets in a single organization, then we also recommend setting this parameter to no. That way, organization relationships will not be required to centralize the forecast and work order creation of assets across organizations. We'll now review some of the new capabilities that are available within the maintenance program. When you create the maintenance program header, you will notice that there's a few new attributes. The first is the program type. It can be set to either maintenance or subscription. For our maintenance customers, we'll typically leave this at the default value of maintenance. It's just going to be used for reporting uh, and for other consuming applications. You can optionally define a program subtype. Uh, we'd mentioned as part of this setup, you can optionally define this, and this could be used for additional filtering, sorting, and reporting purposes. We then have the new checkbox option entitled Allow Assets from Other Organizations. If you wish to forecast assets across organizations by using a centralized maintenance program, then you'd want to set this to yes and click the checkbox. This flag can only be defined during the initial creation of the program or before the first work order has been created using this program. Once the first work order has been created, you cannot uncheck or check this checkbox. Therefore, it's very important to set this uh, as part of your uh, forecast design during the modeling of the maintenance program. There's now a, a new program reference field as well. Uh, additionally, this can be used for reporting purposes uh, or to provide some additional context to the maintenance program. Next are the forecast and work order windows and days attributes. If you set these values, then they will take precedence and will override the values that are set at the plant parameter level. This gives you some control in terms of setting these windows at a program level. And when we go into the work requirement, we'll see that we can even define these at a much lower level uh, that may be more appropriate. So therefore, you only want to define values here uh, if you're not going to define any values at the work requirement level. Uh, and you feel that setting the values here at the program level will apply to all the work requirements that will be defined here within the program. Additionally, the work order start time can be optionally set as well. This is the value that is set uh, within the work orders that are created uh, and will be passed over to the work order scheduler. If it's not defined, then we'll continue to use the default value of 8 a.m. 
in the time zone of UTC. If you wish to set specific values, such as maybe 7 o'clock a.m. in a different work order time zone, uh, you can set those here as well. Uh, if not, uh, we would expect you to leave those as null or set those at the default values. Here's an example program uh, in which we've already created work orders, and we can see that uh, a program subtype has been defined and selected. We can see that the allow assets across uh, or from other organizations checkbox is now disabled. Uh, as we mentioned, once work orders are created, uh, you can no longer enable or disable the program. Uh, however, through your maintenance requirement uh, modeling, you can then decide whether or not assets uh, are included across orgs or not. Uh, we also mentioned that you could set a forecast window and work order windows that are unique to this program, as well as a work order start time and time zone. Now we're going to go review the work requirements, and we can see some additional uh, modeling capabilities uh, for this program that's enabled across orgs. If we see the contextual organization here uh, is MNTALM. Uh, if this program was not enabled for assets across orgs, then we would only be able to associate uh, both items and assets uh, that are for that are enabled for this organization. And of course, for an item-based work requirement, we would only see assets that are enabled and operating within the MNT ALM organization. However, with this program, since it's enabled across orgs, uh, we can see that there are assets uh, from different organizations here. So we both have items and we even have an asset that's from a manufacturing enabled organization. So let's first go into this work requirement here and see this new capability. So one of the things that we can see here is that when we go to select our assets, because this program is enabled for cross org um, organization assets and to create the forecast for assets across organizations, we will render an asset picker uh, that will bring back assets from organizations, not just from the contextual organization. In this particular example, you can see we were able to search for uh, an operating organization asset here that was in a manufacturing organization. And because our parameter uh, at the asset maintenance parameters uh, page was set to no for considering organization relationships, then of course we were also able to see these without having to set up a relationship as well. Within the work requirement, there are also some additional uh, attributes that are also available. Uh, we talked about the forecast windows and work order windows and days. Uh, if this particular uh, forecasted work requirement required a different window than the program or a different window than the plant parameter, we could set those values here as well. There are also a list of work order creation options here. The first is, is we can choose whether or not to create the work order manually or automatically. Today, work orders are always created automatically by the uh, create work orders uh, schedule process that's run as part of the refreshing of your forecast and then the creation of the work orders using those two schedule processes. And typically, you would always expect a work order to be automatically created by the uh, Generate Work Orders ESS program. However, we do provide the ability here uh, to set this option to manually if you wish to use the new forecast UI uh, to manually create those work orders one at a time. Traditionally, most of our customers will want to keep this at the default value of automatically to maintain their existing functionality. However, if you have a use case where you'd like to manually create work orders, then that this would be an option you could look into using. Additionally, when we create the work orders, we've always created them in an unreleased status. However, with this new capability, we allow you to, to pick either uh, unreleased, released, or on hold uh, work order statuses, um, and those work orders will be created with this status value. Uh, this also includes, you can see in this example, uh, additional work order statuses based off those three standard statuses that were created uh, by a customer. You, know, you can extend and create your own custom work order statuses. We also allow you to pick which uh, firm uh, flag value you wish to define uh, in the new work orders that have been created, as well as set a priority. So these are all optional setups that you can uh, you can choose to define here in the work requirement. Uh, if they're not defined, so for instance, work order priority will be set to one if you do not automatically define this. Um, and so these are some just some additional useful uh, capabilities that are available here uh, within the work requirement. We'll now go and review an item-based work requirement. Within the item-based work requirement, 
Um, again, we mentioned that since this program is enabled for across orgs, uh, we have the capability to now see a much broader group of assets um, by being able to centrally manage their maintenance program uh, in a single organization program. When I go to the affected assets uh, page, we'll now see some new columns, such as for these assets, we'll see where they're operating and where they're gonna be maintained. Uh, typically, if an asset is uh, operates in a maintenance-enabled uh, organization, we'll expect it to be maintained in that organization. So here's some different examples where uh, operating organizations are the same as their uh, maintenance organization. If we scroll down, uh, you'll see other organizations here. These are other maintenance-enabled organizations. And we'll also see some assets that are in non-maintenance organizations. You know, this particular example here, we have two manufacturing-only organization assets. And you can see that uh, the first one uh, is operating in uh, the manufacturing ALM organization. However, it's being maintained um, in this contextual organization as the program. However, for assets that are in manufacturing ALM2, I've actually gone and set up an organization relationship uh, between MT ALM and manufacturing ALM2 that's set up as a primary uh, supports relationship. And in this case, I've actually set it up to the ALM org one. So I set the relationship up between ALM org one to be the primary org for manufacturing assets in ALM two. So this is a unique setup. Uh, we mentioned that even though the parameter was set to no for considering asset relationships, there is one use case where we where we allow you uh, to set up one of those relationships, and that's the primary org. So if you have, in this case, uh, assets that are not in a maintenance org, and they're always going to be maintained in a single maintenance org, uh, regardless of where the program is defined, uh, we allow you to, to set up those relationships, and we respect them here. Uh, if not, we would expect that uh, any of those uh, assets, as long as they can be maintained in, a, in, in any of the maintenance organizations, uh, we would allow them to automatically be uh, added and included in these programs as well. And that concludes uh, our demonstration of the new capabilities for the maintenance programs, uh, both at the work requirement and the maintenance program header level. And next, we'll go and review the forecast outcome in the new forecast page. We can now use the maintenance forecasts uh, UI to go in and see the results of our maintenance program example that was across orgs. Here in this new page, I was able to search by the one of the work requirements. Uh, this particular work requirement was the item-based work requirement. And you can see that we have different assets. We talked about these manufacturing assets. We have assets that are in different maintenance organizations. And this page is helpful because we list out the asset which work requirement created it, where is it forecast, what's the status of the forecast, and where do we expect the work to uh, occur, whether it's in the same organization or a different organization, and when we expect it to start. So we can see here that we've got some scheduled work orders, we have some completed work orders, we have canceled work orders, uh, and then we have some planned work orders. So scheduled work orders means uh, that the work order's already been created. Uh, you see this one was due in the past, so a work order has already been created for it. However, we have some work orders that are in the future uh, that are still set to a status of plan, which means we expect the uh, generate work orders ESS job uh, to pick up these due dates into the future and create work orders for them. So if we scroll down to one of our examples, we talked about the two manufacturing assets, and we can see that they correctly forecasted in their either contextual org or in this case, the primary org. Um, and we can go in and we can even some view some additional details about them. We can actually edit the forecast and we can even manually create the work order. Um, and that's directly here from the UI. So one of the neat things that we can do here is we can go in and we can edit the forecast. In this case, we can see that it's scheduled, uh, it was forecasted and scheduled to be worked on in this particular organization on a particular date. Uh, we can go in and we can actually adjust these work order organizations to another maintenance organization uh, in case your asset happens to be uh, operating temporarily in another location. Uh, and so we allow you to, to update this location. Um, and then we'll allow the ESS job to consider this location when it creates the work orders. Additionally, we allow you to, to make some small changes in the work order start date and start times uh, based on uh, the last and next uh, due dates uh, in the forecast as well. So we give you that flexibility to uh, create the work order a little bit earlier, a little bit later. 
uh, here by updating these forecast details. Additionally, you can skip the forecast as well. Uh, if we want to go in and grab a record uh, in the future and skip it, uh, this will then uh, allow this particular due date to be disregarded by the Generate Work Orders program, and we won't create a work order for that date. We can also go in and view the details about this particular uh, due date. So we can drill in and see for this uh, particular asset in this particular org, here is uh, the details behind the work requirement that led to the creation of this particular due date. So this is useful information to understand a little bit more about the work requirement. So there'll be additional demonstrations uh, that explain the functionality a little bit more here in the forecast UI, but we wanted to uh, give you a quick demonstration here uh, as part of the maintenance program enhancements as well.